Well, the Katsanos analysis was for me a little bit as a whistleblower, so it clearly gave us a sign that there is a potential link between uh, paclitaxel eluting devices and mortality rates. Of course, we know that this was a literature-based analysis, and so in my opinion, we really need to look at the patient-level data. And when I'm looking a little bit closer to the patient-level data, I don't see any difference between paclitaxel eluting and non-paclitaxel eluting devices in terms of mortality. I clearly see a difference in terms of efficacy, what is of course also extremely important. So I'm convinced that there are some flaws, that there are some biases in the Katsanos analysis, but anyway we need to investigate further and especially also on the longer term if this sign becomes a reality, yes or no. I still use right at the moment uh, a lot of DCBs uh, in my uh, current practice. Uh, I have a very specific uh, SFA al treatment algorithm where I'm using a plain old balloon angioplasty not only as a vessel prep tool but also as a judging tool. Based on the result after my vessel prep with POBA, I decide if I need a scaffold for a non-angioplasty responder or no scaffold for an angioplasty responder. In the case I have a responder, I use drug-coated balloons only to treat these uh, FEMPOP lesions. And this is independently of uh, length, calcium, stenosis versus occlusion, or de novo or restenotic lesions. My experiences with Luminar are uh, very good. I had the opportunity uh, to work on uh, different trials with the Luminar. The main trial that I've run in the uh, FEMPOP area was the Tantan trial where I used a lot of Luminar uh, 35 DCBs in combination with the iVolution stand and my experiences there in terms of efficacy, safety and also procedural success rate were very high. Now I have the opportunity to use the, pac the Luminor 14 paclitaxel eluting balloon for below the knee disease treatment in CLI patients in the Biblios trial and also my first experiences there are very promising especially in terms of procedural success rate. If I'm looking at the final results of the FPAC trial after six months, after 12 months, uh, this is really looking nice in terms of efficacy and safety, no safety issues at all. And I'm really looking forward also to see presented during the upcoming uh, Euro PCR Congress the 24 month results of the FPAC trial. Uh, also to see if there is a continuation in good efficacy and safety. Beside this, I have already some preliminary results in the TANTAN trial and also there we noticed a high efficacy and safety results in all patients.